glad that you're joining us for Hope Today, where we love to bring you encouragement, inspiration, and of course, the Word of God, so we can brighten up your day, so you can move forward in the days ahead. I'm Sydney Goldman, here with Avery Schaefer. Hey, Sydney! It's so cool to be with you today. You know, Sydney, it is a new season. It's yeah. September. It's time for fresh programming, fresh scripture, like from Exodus, 14, 14, because we love the Word of God. And if you're really going to live out hope, you need the Word of God. It says this, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Oh my gosh, Sydney, do you know how hard it is yeah. to be still and let God fight your battles? You know, I think it's really hard for us in times if you're in the middle of a storm or tribulation or whatever you're going through, I think that's the best thing to do is that, you know, the one thing I have learned when I'm going through the fiercest things of my life where I'm like, Jesus, help me. I don't know what's going on. I feel like all hell is breaking loose. Guess what I do? I get on my knees and I'm still before Jesus because I know in his presence that God will fight our battles for us. So if that's you today, we just want to encourage you. You know, we're always here for you 24 seven and you can call our prayer line at 888-665-4483. You know, Amy, because it's in the presence of the Lord when we we just give it, we yield it all to him. That's when he truly fights for us. In the Amplified Bible, it says to keep silent and remain calm. <laughs> Isn't that so good? Such a word. You know, sometimes we get so stressed out. We get so anxious. We try to make things happen in our own ability. But if we'll just rest, wait on God, hang on to the promises of God, pray, believe God, worship, guess what? He's fighting our battle. It's so good. Is, yeah, he truly is fighting our battles. And you know, one thing I just want to encourage you with today is that God has put on my heart is this is a season, no matter what you've been through, that you're going to rise up out of the ashes, that God's promises still stands, that God is not a man that he should lie. And he always is not a man that should repent. So what God says about your life is true. It stands forever no matter what you're going through. You know, we always love to bring you a story about what's happening in our world. And we want to share this inspiring story with you that's making headlines around the world. Listen to this. A police officer received a kidney from a woman he arrested eight years ago. This is her. Her name is Jocelyn James, and she's a recovering drug addict and once belonged on Franklin, Alabama's most wanted list. Now, Terrell Potter arrested her twice as she battled an opioid addiction and put her in jail. Now, Jocelyn is now clean, amen, and back in December 2019, she saw a Facebook post about Terrell needing a transplant. Now, Jocelyn says the Holy Spirit told her, you've got that man's kidney. Now, Terrell faced an eight-year wait for the procedure and was stunned. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine when Jocelyn reached out to her, reached out to him to offer her kidney? Now, Terrell says this is not just a coincidence. It's just God and there's no other way. Jocelyn and Terrell underwent the procedure at the end of July and doctors have declared it a success. And Amy, I love this. Jocelyn says, quote, for God to use me as a vessel to extend Mr. Potter's life is my greatest accomplishment. Wow. I should be dead. Instead, God helped me save a life. I am overwhelmed. Wow. What an incredible story. I love this story. And you know, I saw that story trending and I just thought it, she actually said he's helped save my life by putting me in jail and talking to me and caring for me. She had an opioid addiction, which is not easy to break, but look at the power of God. And imagine that mom or that grandma that was praying for her. Talk about letting God fight for your battles. I tell you what, God can do anything. Everything might be impossible to man, but what's impossible to man is possible to God. You know, Amy, one thing I love, they had these shirts and said it had Romans 8, 28, all things work together for his good. good. So I love when we see things coming full circle. That's just our God. So be encouraged and be inspired by that story. Well, when we come back from this break, Amy, Tom, and I had a chance to talk with apologist and author Josh McDowell and about his personal journey of healing from child abuse. You don't want to miss it. It's really, really good. We'll be right back. Every day is a gift. The days of 2020 have been challenging, but God promises a future full of hope. A new year begins this month on the Jewish calendar, so we're celebrating new beginnings by offering a unique 16-month Christian Jewish calendar for your best gift. Whether it's a new day or a new year, it's time to embrace the good things God has for you in this season. Not only will this Blessings from Israel calendar inspire you with beautiful pictures of the Holy Land, but it will build your faith with promises from Scripture that add strength and blessing to each day. It even contains resources for Torah study and celebration of holy days. Cornerstone TV is offering it for your best gift by request only. 
Call 888-665-4483 or donate at ctvn.org. Ask for the Blessings from Israel calendar when you give and we'll get it to you right away. Thank you for partnering with Cornerstone Television. Well, we know that uh, many in our society have grown up in difficult situations and uh, international speaker and author Josh McDowell uh, joins us uh, here on Hope Today. And he has been one who has gone through so many difficulties growing up. It, they've just done a, a movie about his life called Undaunted, uh, the early life of Josh McDowell. And uh, Josh joins us now here on Hope Today. Josh, welcome back to the program. Oh, it's good to be back. Well, let, let me just dive into that. Josh, you, in the, in the movie, which I recently uh, saw, uh, Undaunted, you really open up uh, about going through an abusive uh, situation with your father, who was an alcoholic. Also, sexual abuse and the situation you went through there. What was it like to open up about those things? Even now, it's hard for me to watch the movie because I can't believe how the producer and the director created such a reality. That woman in there was the epitome of my mother and, and all. <clears throat> but it was difficult. And I had a number of friends that finally encouraged me to start sharing it publicly. And my fear was if people knew my background, they would always look at me differently. And you know, I was right people do. Uh, and I wasn't mature enough spiritually, I don't think, uh, to handle it. Uh, but Dick Day, a dear, dear close friend of mine, and Steve Arterburn, you probably know Steve Arterburn, mm -hmm. the two of them very forcefully encouraged me to share it publicly. And I remember the first time I did, I thought I was going to pass out mm -hmm. uh, to letting people inside my life and uh, knowing what I'd gone through and the consequences of it. But um, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I didn't. And then when they wanted to make a movie of it for years, I said, absolutely no. I don't want a movie. I don't want it out there in the world. And then I saw a film by Cristobal Cruzan. Uh, he lives in Mexico, he did at the time. And he did this, um, this movie. And I thought, oh my gosh. And I said, Lord, if I ever have a movie done, I'd want Cristobal Cruzan to do it. And so I told my staff and some others that I found a director, if anyone would do it. So I called him and hoping he knew me, because uh, it's a lot easier when somebody knows you. And I called him up in Mexico and, and I said, uh, Cristobal, this is Josh McDowell. And I waited, nothing, nothing. I went, oh no, <laughs> who in the world is Josh? And then he said, are you the Josh McDonald? I'm in. And I asked if he would do the movie of my life called Undaunted. And he said, yes. Yeah. So I said, okay, then I, let's do a movie. Wow. Tell us about your early childhood and what that looked like with your father and alcohol and abuse. I, when I was a child, I, I looked at internally that I wasn't a child worth being sober for, mm. that I wasn't a child worth having a relationship with. Wow. And it always grew up in friction. Uh, when he wasn't trying to kill my mother, I was literally physically trying to kill him. Mm. And some of the most shameful things I did was every, whenever we went out to milk the cows, morning, evening, whatever, he would always leave. He knew then he went to find his, his wine bottles to drink. So I'd watch him where he goes and I'd go and he would leave, I'd go get the wine bottles and I'd urinate in them. And just to shame him. And uh, after he became a believer, he said, how in the world could a son do that to his father? And I just simply said, how in the father, how in the world could be a father be an alcoholic like you and mistreating your family? But for 14 months, we became very close. But the biggest issue for me was at six years old to 13 years old for seven years, every week, three, four times a week, I was homosexually raped by a man by the name of Wayne Bailey. When I was six, he was hired to be a cook and a housekeeper so my mother could work the fields and all. 
And so every time my mother go out to the fields, go downtown shopping, my parents go away for several days, my mother always made me stand right in front of this man. And in her harsh voice, she'd say, now, Josh, you obey Wayne. You do everything he tells you to do. And if I get home and you've been disobedient, I'm going to whip you. Well, what do you do at 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? You do what Wayne Bailey tells you. Wow. And at nine, at nine years old, I got up the courage to tell my mother, oh, I was scared. Oh, take the most scary day of your life, multiply it by 10. That's how scared I was. So I went out and I stood behind my mother and I told her what he was doing to me. My mother turned around and, oh, was she mad? Ooh, she was mad at me. And she started to shake her fingers that I did not raise you to be a liar. Made me go out and back to the big willow tree, break off a switch, pull the leaves off of it, give it to her, take my shirt off. No. And for 30 minutes, she whipped me until it hurt so badly, I just kept screaming, I'm lying, I'm lying. Oh and I would say what my mother did then hurt me more emotionally mm. than seven years of being raped. It's just heartbreaking to hear you know, your testimony, Josh, of just the turmoil, the hurt, the agony, and the trauma mm. that you went through. And I just wanna ask you, know, just going through abuse, you know, it just it's unfathomable to even think what you went through. How did God heal you? How did God walk you through the pain that you endured? The second year in the university, I came to Christ. And the neatest thing that happened when I came to Christ is that God dealt with the shame in my life. Uh, anybody who's sexually abused usually go through life with tremendous shame. And God removed that shame. Uh, and a pastor and several believers walked me through it for a while. Then I think much of dealing with sex abuse and all comes down to an attitude. I'm very fortunate that I don't look at myself as a victim. I look at myself as victorious. I am not a victim. No one can make you a victim unless you allow them. And I never permitted Wayne Bailey to make me a victim, wow. even though I couldn't control what was being done to me. Second, developing a biblical concept of love. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe the Bible, there's only one definition of love in the Bible. It's in Ephesians, where it says to nurture and to cherish, which means to protect and provide. And love means to protect and to provide. It says to love others as you love yourself. And so I had to learn how to love myself, to forgive myself, to provide nutrients for growth in myself and protect myself from people, from anything that would hinder that growth then that became the basis of me loving others. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And my daughter, when she was six years old, said, Dad, if you don't love yourself, your neighbor really has problems. And uh, so I learned biblical love. And uh, then it is true. He will cause all things to work together for the good. Let me tell you. I cannot tell you how often I hung on to that verse. Mm -hmm. And even the bad things, the evil things, even being homosexually raped, he can cause it to work together for the good. He doesn't say it's good. And it wasn't good what I went through. But he took it and has worked it out in my life. And he's given me an opportunity to influence millions all over the world with my testimony and being an apologist setting forth the truth of why Christ is the Messiah, the resurrection is true, and the Bible is true. And I've debated that, presented it all over the world, over 1,200 universities. And so he will cause all things, even bad things, to work together for the good. And one way it is, so many people that have been sexually abused, hear my testimony, they read the book, and they become free. And God is using my situation, which was horrible, to help others to be free. That's worth everything.
Wow, that, that is so powerful, Josh. And I appreciate your willingness to share. And I know there's someone- Did you know, on... Tom? Yeah. Tom, let me introduce it. I had to forgive that man. I hated him. A pastor said to me, well, you need to forgive him. I said, I want him to burn in hell and I'll take him there. But I had a problem. I knew the Bible was true. I knew the Bible commanded all of us, including me, to forgive. So I did it, Tom. But I didn't have any goody-goody feeling. Mm -hmm. I wanted him to burn in hell. I did it by faith, being obedient. Mm -hmm. So I drove 44 miles to his place where he was staying in Jacksonville, Michigan, knocked on the door, and when he answered... I just said, Wayne, what you did to me was evil, very evil. But I've come to know Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord, and I've come here to tell you that Jesus died as much for you as he did for me. I forgive you. And I turned around and walked out. I know that is touching someone's life out there right now, Josh, because I know we could we could spend a week talking about what forgiveness is, what it isn't, what what all all the the, the, the parts of forgiveness and all the the transitions of forgiveness. But could you just speak to that one out there? Because I know this is hitting someone right now in their living room. Could you just speak to that one out there right now that's that suffered similarly and doesn't understand what you're talking about about forgiveness? I feel you're hurt. I know what you're going through. And there is hope. That's what this program is about. And there is a way out the other side. But let me suggest something that no one suggested to me immediately, or I would have been helped a lot sooner. Don't go it alone. You won't make it. You won't make it. I had to find Four, and it ended up to be five godly men who became a support group for me. They loved me. They, they taught the scriptures to me. They encouraged me. I could show up at their house at 2 o'clock in the morning, one of their houses, and they would have a smile on their face and welcome me in for coffee. And then they would listen to my hurt and speak the word of God into my life. You will not make it alone, usually. <clears throat> Over almost 200 times in the Bible, young lady, young man, it says, each other or one another. What I did, I found a good Christ-centered church, Factoryville Bible Church in Michigan, a good Christ-centered church. And I found people in there and in Battle Creek, Michigan, I found a number of people who truly walked with Christ, and I asked them to help me. I wouldn't be here without other believers around me, putting their arms around me and walking me through it. So my biggest thing to you is don't go it alone. Josh, this is really, I know like you're speaking, I'm one of those that have, I'm an overcomer of sexual abuse and I just appreciate so much your heart and your transparency because it's, I know it's hitting that person that's been so affected. Maybe they're living in turmoil. Maybe they haven't released that forgiveness. You know, that's a really, like even what you were sharing about the power of forgiving somebody that did something so horrific towards you. And I just want to ask, you know, even after we have forgiveness and those things, what are some other steps that somebody's been sexually abused that they need to take to even have further healing in their journey? I think one of the healthiest things is to meet with someone who's become free from it. Because the average pastor and everything doesn't know how to counsel you. For example, someone worked through this with me and I'm so glad they did. I had to work through the issue that I am not damaged goods sexually. Amen. And people say, oh, that's easy. It wasn't for me. Uh, I lived quite a while thinking I could never have a happy marriage, I could never have a healthy sexual life, etc. And several brothers and sisters helped me walk through that, took me into the scriptures and all. And uh, so much of it, Tanya, I believe, is helping people get the right attitude. Because if you get the right attitude, you trust Jesus better with it. And uh, And I would say... People getting me into the word, not any really specific passages or anything, but I just started with Matthew and Genesis and started reading each, each day. 
And I can't believe, Tanya, how my attitude started to change. I, I, I started to get hope. Uh, life started to become exciting. And uh, then when I got to John, whoo, blew my mind. And then I think the book of Romans, I could hardly wait to get through John. Why? Well, I, I didn't know Romans was so great. But I don't know why God gave us any books of the Bible except Romans and maybe the Gospel of John. Right. Just about everything you need to know is in John or Romans. Yeah. And uh, wow. those are the two books that really helped me come out of it. The Word of God. Yeah. But here's the problem. Maybe you could join a recovery Bible study where there's a leader who's been through it and they, they know how to put the scriptures into your life. Josh, that is so good. Again, thank you so much for being willing to share, being open. I appreciate you so much. Appreciate your ministry. Again, josh.org has a lot of wonderful information. And uh, again, thank you for being with us today. Oh, well, thank you. The check's in the mail. I've already sent it to you. <laughs> All right, well, again, Whenever a church you. says to me the check is in the mail, I know it's going to be very small. <laughs> well, again, thank you so much. Uh, okay. and everyone out there, we'll be praying for you in just a moment. We'll be right back. On tomorrow's Hope Today, releasing heavenly encounters. Dr. Candace Smithyman shares her keys to supernaturally shifting atmospheres. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. We're so glad that you've joined us for this very special hope today. And this is what our program's all about, is giving you hope in the midst of the ashes. And maybe you're like me, maybe you have gone through sexual abuse. It's a very hard thing, it's a difficult thing. And even just Josh McDowell's testimony, it's just like so many of you, you could probably could relate. You could probably say, that's me, I, I relate to that. And we just wanna encourage you today, you know, there is hope and there is freedom that is found in Christ. And there is such redemption. And that's what God really laid on my heart today to share with you, that if you're like me, I wanna just first say that you you are a victorious, that you are an overcomer, and that God was with you through it all, no matter how painful it can be. I know there's nights you probably cried out to God. I know there's nights you probably said, why is this my lot in life? But you know what? God makes beauty out of our ashes. And even I had a vision of just like the Holy Spirit, you know, you might look at your situation, the Holy Spirit just breathes on your ashes as you rise up and he's making you a new creation. So you are not defeated. And we're just so glad that if that's you today, if you are an overcomer from child sex or abuse or any abuse, just give us a call because we would love to connect with you at 888-665-4483 and just pray with you and stand with you because you know, Amy, it's such a thing that's so important too is that no matter the, the hope and redemption, but also the power of forgiveness. Oh my gosh, the power of forgiveness. You know, God is the master at making dead things come to life again. You might feel dead inside. You might feel hopeless inside, but with the power of God, if you'll just lean into his presence, if you'll lean into his power, and if you will choose to forgive. You know, I grew up, Sydney, watching Josh McDowell as a teenager. He would come and speak to thousands and he has books like, I don't know, 40. He has a ton of books and he's written. And, and to hear his story now, this many years later, I just think, wow, talk about the power of forgiveness. You would not even see a tinge of smoke on this man. I would have no idea that that was part of his story, but look what God can do because God's extravagant love will just heal you, restore you. And today we are proud of our partners who are really making a difference locally and around the world. Psalm 108 says that your love is extravagant. And today we hear from my dear friend, Denise Graves and the Extravagant Love Project. Here's Denise. Hey everyone, this is Denise Graves from Extravagant Love Project with my buddy, Amy Volstead. And we're just here to give you an update on what we've been up to. I'm in the middle of crazy, God's still working. We got a chance to partner with Urban Impact and deliver food, basic needs to our community, to bless them, to pray for them. And we also got um, to do a night of worship with our church and community Bible study group who we love. And um, we've been Zooming with them regularly. Um, and it's just been great to connect with them, keep in touch with them. We also recently have partnered with the Trade Institute. Denise and I wrote some curriculum about healing and wholeness and a lot of their people are coming out of really hard situations, and so we get to go in and do trainings 
with them and offer them hope. And we are also partnering with Light of Life in, in January to do the same with their women coming out of really hard situations. And the power of story, the power of worship, and all these tools um, are so essential to healing. And um, we're grateful that we get to do this and partner with so many amazing people. You know, we're not just a makeover, but we're more than that. We're about conferences and curriculum, and um, we are looking at, you know, this is another year of crazy where we it would have been our 10th makeover. We can't do that, but we're looking at doing a virtual event this year where we do what we would normally do at the evening gala and we'll worship and we'll hear about the power of story and everybody will be invited including you guys so um that's what we've been up to and we just want to say thank you to cornerstone television and all of you that have supported cornerstone television for allowing us to enlarge our territory with um, more lives that we get to touch from every socioeconomic background so we just want to say um blessing on you and thank you again from the bottom of our hearts for allowing us to be about what is about God's heart. Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. Love you. And we love so much what the Denise Graves and Amos Volstead, which you saw there in that video, are doing with the Extravagant Love Makeover. And I think it's just so important, you know, today, I feel like the whole thread and theme of the show is that really that God is just talking about this extravagant love on us and the redemption that comes that, you know, when we are in Christ, we become new creations and old things have passed away. So no matter what we've gone through, God is doing a new thing. And we have so many prayer requests and people that have called in. Amy, who do you have? Yeah, you know, I have Rose calling in for healing, deliverance, peace, terror calling him for deliverance and provision. I mean, over and over, peace, deliverance, comfort, mm -hmm. healing. And guess what? God is a delivering God. He's a healing Jesus. He is a comforting father. He is the prince of peace. And we believe right now he is coming right into your home or in your car or wherever you're viewing this. And he is touching your life and he will radically transform you because of his extravagant, wonderful, amazing love. You know, Davey, I just love so today is all a bit about his extravagant love that picks us out of the ashes. And no matter what we've gone through, no matter what we're walking through in our worlds and our lives, that you know what? It's so amazing that Jesus, because he got up again, that we're able to get up again. And so that resurrection power from Jesus, guess what? It's in you too. So we want you to know that hope. We want you to hold on to that truth that Jesus is with you no matter what you're going through in your circumstance. Know that God loves you and that you are going to be transformed by his power and his hope and his redemption. Have a good day.